Welcome back to my conversation with Dr. Joe Rom, who is a physicist, climate expert, author, and the founder of Think Progress Climate Blog, titled Climate Progress. Time Magazine called him the web's most influential climate change blogger. He is also the author of many books, including Climate Change, What Everyone Needs to Know. His latest article published in Climate Progress is titled 450 scientists present a stunning rebuke of Trump's climate science denial. We're going to discuss that in this segment as well. Thanks again for joining us, Dr. Rom. Thanks for having me. Dr. Rom, uh, one of the key findings in the first report we talk about is the rate at which Greenland is melting. Can you tell us more about that? Well, uh, clearly, uh, the first thing people should know is that you know, we've had global warming globally of about a degree Celsius, 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit uh, since pre-industrial times. But in the Arctic, temperatures have been rising twice as fast. And there are feedbacks that, that cause that, one of which is, is that the warmer it gets, the more ice melts and the more ice melts, you're, you're replacing reflective ice with either the ocean, which is blue, or the land, which is dark, and that absorbs more of the sunlight. So you get this feedback. So the great concern is that as the Arctic speeds up warming, ice melts and it warms up faster. And so we're seeing the Arctic uh, Ocean becoming, you know, covered with less and less ice, and we're seeing the Greenland ice sheet covered with less, you know, that is melted, melting at a, at a record rate. And it has been speeding up greatly in the past 10 to 15 years. And it contains enough ice to raise sea levels over 20 feet. Now, the good news is it can't melt, you know, all at once. But the bad news is it is speeding up. And there is great concern that between Greenland and Antarctica, uh, we could see several feet of sea level rise by the end of the century, particularly if we keep, we don't restrict, uh, you know, greenhouse gas emissions. Right. And Dr. Rahm, according to the NOAA report now, 12% uh, of the Earth uh, endures severe drought. Is this a record as well? Yeah. So in 2016, there was, you know, severe drought over... Uh, you know, 12 percent of the planet at any one time, which which is a record. Uh, one of the things that you expect from climate change uh, is that as it gets hotter, wet areas are going to get wetter because you're evaporating, you know, moisture from the oceans and it comes down in more intense deluges. But the dry areas get drier so that when you have a, a semi-arid region like the U.S. Southwest, uh, as it gets hotter, the ground dries up, re reservoirs dry up, lakes and st streams dry up. So it just gets uh, drier and drier and drier. So you see more intense droughts. And of course, we just came out of the a five-year drought in, in California, the worst drought in over a thousand years. So these types of droughts are becoming more and more likely. and, and uh, the prediction is, uh, you know, if we keep just dumping uh, carbon pollution in the atmosphere, then these droughts will last longer. And, and we can see, you know, multi droughts that last 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, so much worse than, you know, humans have, have experienced, uh, you know, in, in, in recent memory. Right. And when you say that uh, we've just come out of a drought in California, uh, is this uh, a good indication that things will get better or this is just a fluke that it's let up a little bit? Well, uh, look, the point is that uh, as areas reduce, get less rainfall and get hotter, then they're more prone to drought. So whereas they might have only had, let's say, a one-year drought before, now they might have a five-year drought. But as you get hotter and drier, then your regular climate makes drought much more likely. And eventually, of course, the climate shifts entirely and you simply become, you know, a desert. And, and 
you know, the semi-arid regions of the country, like the U.S. Southwest, Southern California, these are regions that are very close to desert-like conditions, and they don't require much to simply turn into permanent dust bowls. Dr. Rom, the New York Times just wrote about a leaked draft of the National Climate Assessment last week, which concluded that climate change is caused by human activity. I have two questions for you. One is, why are we still talking about human caused climate uh, change? Um, isn't it been proven over and over again that it is human activity caused? And second, um, what is the story around the EPA, Scott Pruitt, uh, saying that uh, his staff will review this report for its accuracy? What are the uh, political implications here? Well, I think uh, you're certainly correct. The science is overwhelming that humans are the primary cause of climate change. And study after study has said that. The, the, scientific community has said we are certain of that fact as we are that cigarettes are harmful to your health. Uh, so, you know, it's, it just is the scientific community recommends that you stop smoking if you, you know, don't want to get sicker. Uh, we need to, you know, reverse and ultimately end uh, carbon pollution. So, um, but there has been a massive disinformation campaign for decades funded by the fossil fuel industry and as a result, uh, there are many people who have, you know, got received uh, misleading or outright incorrect information. And there are a lot of people uh, in this administration, from Donald Trump to EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt, who have been, you know, misleading or lying to the public about our scientific understanding. Now, the report that you're talking about, the National Climate Assessment, the New York Times, uh, uh, did a story on. That is a congressionally mandated report to examine what is going on with the science. What does the science say about climate change now and what is projected to happen in the future depending on whether we take action to reduce carbon pollution or not. So this assessment, which was uh, censored, it was, it was modified, watered down during the Bush administration, and then it was publicized and, and given its full attention during the Obama administration, the next version. Now we're at uh, versions that are one that the Trump administration is going to have the ability to edit um, at the political level. And so the draft that you can find online is the final draft report uh, of the National Climate Assessment. That report is extensively peer-reviewed already. The National Academy of Sciences, uh, which was set up under Abraham Lincoln, you know, to, to provide the best scientific advice to the country, has already peer-reviewed the National Climate Assessment, which itself was done by 13 federal agencies, the scientists at 13 federal agencies. So it is a pretty rock-solid report, and I certainly urge people to, to read it. Uh, it is now in the hands of political appointees in the White House and other agencies like uh, the EPA. So there is the opportunity for them to, you know, water it down, even, even if it means, you know, uh, changing scientifically correct statements into incorrect statements. Uh, thankfully, the report got leaked, so we will at least be able to see whatever censoring or, or watering down occurs. Right. And um, even given the watering down or tampering they may have uh, with the report, uh, Dr. Rom, is it uh, too late? I mean, has there been so much damage to the environment um, and both the assessment and the NOAA report all indicate that we are on a collision course in terms of the impact of climate change in our daily lives and how we live and so on. So I have two more questions. One is, is any of this, is it too late? And uh, if not, can some of this be reversed? Well, look, we still do have time and, and the National Climate Assessment uh, and all the recent science makes that clear. Uh, we are, it's important for people to understand, we are stuck with a certain amount of dangerous warming because we have dawdled for 25 years ignoring 
uh, the ever louder warnings from climate scientists. So yes, we are stuck with worsening heat waves and droughts and floods. The question is, uh, is are the nations of the world going to do what they unanimously committed to do in Paris, which is to keep reducing carbon pollution and keep total warming to under 2 degrees Celsius or 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit? If we could do that, we could minimize the chances uh, of the worst impacts occurring. Um, on the other hand, you know, as I'm sure your, your viewers know, Donald Trump has said he is withdrawing. He's going to withdraw the United States from the Paris Agreement. We're not going to fulfill our pledge. We're not going to do more in the future. And so the very real risk is that we go back towards more worst case scenarios. So we're really at a crossroads. We're at a, we're at a, a very decisive time in human history. Um, and if we go down the path of, you know, the Trump policies, the policies of the climate science deniers, then the kinds of impacts we're talking about are going to be devastating. I mean, we're talking about routinely seeing heat waves of 130 degrees or more. I just did a post on climate progress on that. We're talking about very high levels of sea level rise this century, six, seven, eight feet. Um, so these are, these are worst case scenarios that we can avoid if the world acts together. Uh, but it does require the world to act together and, and we're the number two emitter. So you can't achieve, uh, uh, the, you know, the better scenarios unless the United States reverses course and, and joins the rest of the world. So, uh, I think people need to understand and, and that was one of the reasons I wrote, you know, climate change, what everyone needs to know, which is a primer uh, that Oxford University Press put out. Everyone needs to know we're, we're stuck with a certain amount of dangerous climate change. But because of this clean energy revolution that's also occurring, we have a chance if we act now and aggressively enough to avoid the worst case scenario, which is a very grim thing. And people need to understand how bad it could get uh, because that's motivation to avoid it. All right, Dr. Rom, I thank you so much for joining us and I urge everybody to uh, tune into Dr. Rom's blog on thinkprogress.com called Climate Progress. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.